Hello, we're rolling into another episode of the DRH show. As usual, in each episode, I'll be talking to interesting people within psychology, mental health, and well-being. My brilliant guest for today is a meditation expert and founder of Be Modern Meditation, Laura Coleman. Thanks for joining me. Oh, you're welcome. It's great to be here. Okay. It's lovely to, you know, to come across with different um people doing all sorts of different things. Um, just the other day I was talking to a psychotherapist in London and you're actually the first um, person that I'll be talking to about um, who, who's an expert in meditation. So if you could just give me um, a quick snapshot of your life, um, tell us how you came to be doing what you're doing and um, also tell us about a bit about your company. Sure, absolutely. Well, my journey with meditation started about six years ago. So um, I sat in my room and wrote in my journal the words, I'm nothing. Mm-hmm. And it was a moment of, 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 of really stark reality. I had gone from having a corporate career and mm-hmm. really successful corporate career. And then I had two children very close together. And as a family, we moved to Australia with my husband's job. So I became a stay at home mum. And on the outside, everything looked great because I was project managing a house build. I was really involved with the school and the children's lives. But inside, I was really struggling. And looking back, I think I was suffering from um, depression and actually anxiety as well. Um, But I just didn't recognize that. What I felt was this extreme difficulty just getting through the day, leading and culminating in that moment of writing those words. And I think that that I felt those words so strongly at that moment that it was almost like a shock. It was, you know, firstly, you know, do if I'm really feeling that way, if if it's really true, that's really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, if it's not true, how awful that I feel that way. Um, so it was almost like it was a sort of a wake up call of something needs to change because I'm not happy, I'm not enjoying my life, and I'm struggling. Um, and I, I came across meditation by chance, really. Mm. And it became uh, what I found was it became this scaffolding um, to allow me to see my life differently and experience my life differently. And it, and it sparked a journey of um, so I studied psychology and mindfulness and um, acceptance commitment therapy. But what I kept looping back to was that the fundamental piece for me in all of that transformation of my life was the meditation because it allowed me to experience things differently um, and it reconnected me so um, when we moved back to the UK in 2018 um, I became I over the course of that journey of doing all of that exploration and learning I became really passionate about wanting to help other people who were in that stuck place for whatever reason and Mm -hmm. I realized that that meditation was going to be the fundamental piece of that puzzle for me. So I then trained to teach meditation. And then the program that I created at Be Modern Meditation is it pulls from that the psychology, the neuroscience of my meditation, as well as the acceptance commitment therapy and those practical meditation techniques to not just teach people how to meditate, but actually how to embed it and integrate it into your life mm-hmm. so that you can change your experience of your life. And, and ultimately build a life that's meaningful for you. So that's really what was behind the impetus behind creating um, Be Modern Meditation. Mm-hmm. So um, basically, it just came from a personal experience and um, it comes um, now as your mission to help other people who have undergone the same experience as you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but- I mean, I think, well, I was just going to say that it's, mm-hmm. it's, I think so many people now are in mm-hmm. stress is stress is, you know, it is itself is a pandemic, you know, we're all mm-hmm. struggling with that. And actually mm-hmm. the way that manifests and the way it does to your life, mm-hmm. um, we all need ways to, to find different ways of, of processing that stress so we can thrive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not just coronavirus, which is a pandemic, but it's also stress. Well, for the benefit yeah. of um, those who are, Watching this, we're recording it 12th of March. So, um, yeah, that's why we're, we talk about pandemic. Those, okay. words, uh, those words are kind of top of our mind right now. And let's yeah. hope that um, things are going to ease off from here. Yeah. Okay. But um, Laura, um, who, who do you actually work with? Is it usually business people or is it just people who are, tend to be more at risk uh, of, of stress? Um, who do you work with? Um, it's a combination. It tends to be, I suppose the common thread is it's people who are um, high achieving, um, 
mm. usually under a lot of stress and pressure, so often corporate. Mm. Um, um, and um, they are, as I was actually, often I find is that they are outwardly, they're ticking all the boxes, but mm -hmm. they're just, they're, maybe they're starting to experience health issues or mm -hmm. Um, they are experiencing difficulties in their life as a result of stress and pressure. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not sleeping. Um, so there's usually some kind of trigger that means that they go, do you know what? I need to do something or even just that vague unease. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that's the sort of the, the sort of profile. Um, it's, mm -hmm. I also get a lot of people who are um, who have gone through some kind of life transition. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe they are they, they've been mums and they're coming through their side or their children are leaving home or mm -hmm. they're a they're you know for men it's men who are kind of almost in that mm -hmm. midlife kind of you know transitioning into a new phase um but I also go into corporate environments as well so I deliver workshops mm -hmm. I've, I've delivered workshops at Ernst & Young and at construction firms mm -hmm. at architects so I guess the common thread is you know people experiencing stress at a high level um mm -hmm. so it's quite varied Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to touch upon um, the kind of people that you work with, because you mentioned that you predominantly work with people in the corporate, um, uh, on the on corporate, um, and these are the kind of people who are busy and they've got lots of mind, um, they've got lots of thoughts on their mind. So, how can they actually squeeze in meditation um, in that kind of lifestyle? Well, that's that's a really good point you make because actually, there's I suppose when I first talk to people about meditation, there's kind of one of four responses usually. So it's either mm -hmm. um, it's either I've tried it and I'm no good at it um, mm -hmm. because my mind won't stop thinking, or it's I don't have time, or it's just not for me, um, or it's a bit woo woo, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a bit out there. And the first two are the ones that are really uh, really interesting because mm -hmm. um, one of the things that that people believe about meditation is that it should feel it should be a relaxation experience that it should make you feel calmer that it should be this moment of tranquility um, mm -hmm. but in reality often during a meditation practice what you're actually doing is mm -hmm. turning inwards and experiencing whatever states are there and trying to do that in a in a, a non-judgmental way to just mm -hmm. allow yourself to experience it and if you're under a lot of pressure and stress mm -hmm. when you first start to meditate your mind will kick in with mm -hmm. all sorts of thinking and you start to you're starting to witness what's already there. And so mm -hmm. that sense of, um, whoa, it's just too much. And this isn't going to work for me when people when what I actually take people through is the um, the sort of the, the neuroscience of what is actually happening in the brain when you meditate. And actually the fact that when it, it doesn't have to feel relaxing for it to be doing the job. So you're actually training that capacity to pay attention and to um, let go of and to sort of down regulate from stress. Mm -hmm. And that that training, a bit like going to the gym, doesn't always feel it can feel like really hard work sometimes. Well, meditation's mm -hmm. the same. You know, you can actually, but you when you open your eyes, that's when you go, ah, oh, I feel lighter, and you start to sleep better, you start to respond better, and you have this space. Um, and the second point there around, I just haven't got time to fit it in. Mm -hmm. One of my big passions is giving people a layered practice and guiding them through so that as little as five minutes a day, you can make a difference to the way that your body is experiencing stress. It can be that small amount of time and you, call, you create that breaker circuit in the stress response so that you can turn chronic mm -hmm. stress into lots of acute stressors rather than one continuous band of stress. And, you know, the, the impact on the body is obviously very different um, mm -hmm. in two scenarios. So um, and the final strand to that, that kind of time piece is teaching people ways and, and that they can create micro moments um, mm -hmm. in their day and giving them techniques that actually are really effective, but also mm -hmm. really straightforward um, beyond, the, you know, not trying to just pay attention to the breath or, you know, there are some really useful things that are very um, obvious and out there, but actually when you guide people and work and personalize it to them, you can really make it work for their life exactly as it is. And mm -hmm. that for me is the key. Mm -hmm. I, I've never really um, done meditation myself. So I, I think um, pe people like um, in my situation would actually be interested, like what, can we actually derive from meditation in relation to our mental health and well-being? Mm. So what sort of the benefits would be? Yes. Yeah. Um, I guess, um, 
you know, I've already talked about some of the um, some of the things that I've experienced, but um, there's a lot of physical benefits. So, Mm -hmm. you know, around um, reducing your um, in terms of your heart health, even. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, the the in terms of mental health, one of the biggest things you create is space between you and the things that are happening. So mm-hmm. rather than being reactive and, and operating from that, you know, something happens, I react. What you build is this capacity to be the witness of that. So something happens, I know somebody cuts you up in traffic or you're stuck, mm-hmm. um, you're on a busy train, commuter train, or you have a, a work deadline come in. And rather than um, experiencing that as an immediate thing that you need to react to, you you start to experience um, that you have time to react, you have time to pause and respond, and it really it that it it's a really powerful shift um, mm-hmm. when you start to be able to create that space because you actually start to then experience your day to day very differently. Um, and you can start to so I had I've had clients who have um, experiencing massive stress in their work lives Mm -hmm. suddenly finding that things are flowing more effortlessly because they they have this breathing space Mm -hmm. so um, they can actually respond to what's really going on in front of them rather than the stories that are playing out in their head about what's going on Mm -hmm. Um, and um obviously you've been working um within meditation for quite a long time and you've also encountered a lot of people who quite um shall we say um ambivalent um about uh, meditation so um what what are the common myths that you've come across in relation to meditation yeah so the common ones are that you need to be able to empty your mind that's the biggest one Mm -hmm. we already talked about that um there's a second one would be that um you need a special spot to sit you know you need to create you know a, a, a special cushion a special corner with your lighted candle and mm-hmm. you know beautiful music um the reality is meditate on a train meditate on a bench you know meditate yeah. in your car and mm-hmm. and free yourself from the need for meditation to be a special like silent place because mm-hmm. um actually when you um um, when you when you um, change your mindset about it and see it as actually I can create the conditions for meditation wherever I am because all I am really doing is tuning in to what's there. It doesn't matter if there's noise. It doesn't matter what's going on, um, and that's quite liberating of uh, in terms of how you can integrate it into your life. Um, so that's a big myth, um, and I think also the length of time that you need for it to be effective. So. Um, um, at, literally as i said i mean even one minute a day is going Mm -hmm. to make a difference Mm -hmm. um and on that i I like i often liken it to um physical the training of the body so when we're training the mind in meditation you can apply you can apply similar principles so for example it's the regularity of your practice that's more important than the length of practice so if i meditated once a fortnight for an hour Mm -hmm. that's less beneficial than doing Five, five minutes a day mm. um, a bit like you know if I was going to the gym I wouldn't go to the gym once a month have a massive workout and think cool that's it I'm ripped I'm going to be done for the month you know <laughs> we know that we have to do regular practice and it is like it is like training I mean one of the main areas you're training is that prefrontal cortex so that ability that executive functioning to be I mean that's where your pause button is coming from is that you're um, in there's a Harvard study where they um, they took a group of meditators and they got, mm-hmm. took a group of people and got them to meditate for 30 minutes and they got a group and they were making, getting them to read for 30 minutes a day. And what they found in the meditating group is that there were structural changes in on the MRI scanning. There were structural changes in the prefrontal cortex. So increased activation and a thickening of that myelin layer, that kind of, you know, that signal conducting layer. So you're literally building a muscle in meditation. And even three months later, those changes, um, whilst obviously not to the same degree, mm-hmm. they're still in place. Whereas the reading group, whilst they experience relaxation in the moment, there's no corresponding um, changes to the way the brain is actually activating. So you're changing that circuitry, building a muscle. And when you invest in that training, just like training your body, it takes time. And at first it feels hard and you don't feel like you can do it, but you, it becomes like brushing your teeth, mm-hmm. that you can make it something that, it's just part of your life. Um, and, and that's when the ripple to 
um, in, and, and once you start connecting to yourself uh, more deeply in that way, you start to tap into creativity and insight and integrating all parts of your brain, not just the logic driven part that we tend to engage and, and, and activate and recruit in our sort of structured work lives. Mm. I, I just want to wear a cynic card here. So um, we, we, we've been talking like um, uh, how meditation helps in relation to mental health and well-being. And also you've touched upon the physical aspects. But um, do, do you also have any idea like who is it not going to work for? Well, it depends what your definition of not going to work. So if what, mm. what do you, when, when you think of meditation not working, what would your... Um, let, let's say I've got stress and then I've tried meditation. I, I still feel stressed and anxious and depressed. So who, who who would, you know, not really get any benefit out of meditation? Not you. So I think there's something interesting there in the sense that one of the things we're, not, we're doing in meditation, we're not trying to get rid of anything. So mm-hmm. um, all we're actually doing is becoming more aware of what's there. And mm-hmm. by doing that, it, it naturally lessens the impact of it so Mm. you're not going to suddenly magically it's not a magic Mm. bullet Mm. that you're going to suddenly have no stress but um with regular consistent practice Mm -hmm. um anybody and everybody Mm -hmm. will experience changes to the way that 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 stress is expressing now Mm -hmm. at first you might feel like and and i've had this with clients i had a client and she um she well she was she was like this is just I I still feel like it still feels really difficult. It's just not working. And then over time, she, Mm -hmm. things just started to change. And suddenly she had this one day, I remember she messaged me, she'd gone to, she's a TV producer in London. She, so she commutes all the time. She's also a property developer. She's got two young children, massive stress. And when she first came to me, she was on antidepressants. She was on sleeping for maybe three or four hours a night. She was surviving on diet Cokes. And um, she really it took time and she thought that she could feel the benefits in the moment she's like I just don't see how this is going to change anything and then one day she messaged me and she she goes to this same cafe every week and she works in the cafe for a few hours Mm. and she was in the cafe and she was like oh wow they've got new floor and then she's like oh I've got new lighting oh wow so she she sort of noticed she spoke to the owner and she said you know wow I love what you've done and the owner was like um we did that a year ago Mm -hmm. and so she was just for her she suddenly went oh my god I've she said I and she it was this real epiphany moment for her of she suddenly was more present in her own life and she then that made her suddenly reflect and think actually this is happening to me Mm -hmm. when I'm on the train platform this is happening to me when I'm with the kids Mm -hmm. hang on my my mind is right here Mm -hmm. so much more and at first, that was the reason she didn't, she just couldn't, it wasn't like she suddenly became somebody else. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like she suddenly evolved into the Buddha. Mm-hmm. So what, it's a gradual she, process. Yeah, but it's, but it's, it's subtle, but the changes are so, mm-hmm. um, the shifts, it's more like shifts and the shifts in perception for her around mm-hmm. um, the power she gave to her thinking, the mm-hmm. stories she used to get caught up in about what other people were thinking of her or what she thought of herself suddenly she was able to unhook from those because she had this space to see Mm. oh that's just a voice telling me Mm -hmm. oh you're no good at that they think they're judging you Mm -hmm. um so i would argue that there isn't anybody Mm -hmm. that would experience benefits um Mm. but they would just be very different depending on your situation and also when you start excavating stress that's been in your system for a long time Mm -hmm. there is a sense that you know at first that can stir up things that you've stuffed down and not wanted to feel Mm -hmm. and so you know that can take that can actually in a way almost feel worse before it gets better Mm -hmm. um so Mm -hmm. i would definitely recommend it which is part of the reason why i think it works well to have guidance and work with someone when you want to meditate because you then you can then Mm -hmm. um work with them to work through that so sometimes i find that clients might be experiencing Mm -hmm. resistance in Mm -hmm. their practice or they um, they find that it's been going really well, and then suddenly, they their mind is just suddenly crazy again, and or mm-hmm. they they you know there's just something's not working. So when we actually talk about it, often mm-hmm. what's going on in their meditation is a reflection of something internal that they're working through and processing, and so they get that opportunity to really understand what's happening, which then just it accelerates that whole um, that whole transformation. 
Mm-hmm. Now, now for people who haven't tried meditation but are considering of trying meditation, what would be your advice? So, um, um, an app that I um, recommend mm-hmm. is um, Insight Timer. So, it's a free app. It's actually the most used app in the world, actually, for mm-hmm. meditation. But um, it's 100 free. My meditations are on there as well. Um, and I would recommend just going and literally starting out mm-hmm. with just a five-minute meditation and just without expectation of doing anything, just literally sit and just, but take any pressure off um, mm-hmm. of it needing to feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that would be my advice is to just make a start. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and I can, you know, I can provide you, you know, if, if anybody's listening wants to, uh, a download of a meditation, I'm happy to provide a five minute meditation to get them started. So, um, you know, yeah. Uh, I'll put your um, link on the disc- uh, video description um, after this video. Um, you, you mentioned about um, the app. Obviously, um, now we, we really love apps. But what, what's the difference between, you know, learning how to meditate with um, a teacher like yourself and just, just using an app? There's a few things. So, um, you know, actually, a lot of people that come to me, their kind of gateway drug, if you like, has been headspace or calm or whatever Mm. but what they find is that like I mentioned before you know you you hit you know you especially when you're changing something Mm. you're you start you do get resistance you do get things come up and Mm. when you're doing that on your own it can be hard to know what is this right am I am I still is this is this supposed to be happening like this or is this something I need to do differently is this the right style for me so when you work with a teacher, you you actually have the opportunity to really make it make sure that it you're it's actually going to be effective for you. Um, and the other thing I find when people work with me, or or even if they uh, just come to a workshop and then they just become part of the, the sort of wider community that I um, that I have for meditators, mm. um, it's is there's almost uh, there's also a group of accountability as well of like being part of something. Um, there's there's a real sense that. It's, it's, it's a bit like being part of a gym or a, mm-hmm. or a, a running club. You know, I know for me, um, I wanted to, to, to run um, for my health, but I knew that I just not, I was never going to make myself go and do it. I would always, I'd be like, oh, I haven't quite got time now. So I joined mm-hmm. this running club and I get a text on a Thursday morning and it's like, are you coming tonight? And I'm like, oh, yes. And then once I've said yes, I kind of like, oh, no, I still better go now. <laughs> so it's like you've got that accountability there and it and I think that actually makes a, a significant difference as well mm-hmm. and um for, for those who want to follow your footsteps um could you give us um like um a, a preview of what does it entail to set up a meditation practice uh, a personal practice or a a, 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 a personal practice a personal practice mm. um so in, in the sense of um, like how you'd go about making sure you did it or what sort of thing mm. you. Let, let, let's say someone wants to do what exactly what you're doing. Um, what, what, what does it involve to, to do what you're doing to have a meditation practice? Um, well, the first thing is making a commitment to yourself that you're going to do it um, mm-hmm. and, um, and starting small. Um, mm-hmm. And the other thing is, is being allowing yourself to feel uncomfortable. Um, mm-hmm. because when you take when you start anything new you're going to f- have moments where you feel uncomfortable and mm-hmm. what you're trying to do in meditation is mm-hmm. allow that to be the case you know, allow yourself to just experience what's there um, and know that just by sitting you're making mm-hmm. a difference you know, like Deepak Chopra um, who I, I love you know him I love his work he's, and he's, he has this great quote he says the best meditation practice is the one you actually do Mm-hmm. And I think that's great. And I would that's my advice would be is make it fit your life exactly as it is. Mm-hmm. Don't think that I, I where I see people go wrong is they go, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get up at 5 a.m. I'm gonna get up before everyone, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna I'm gonna meditate, I'm gonna make myself meditate for 40 mm-hmm. minutes a day and it's gonna be amazing. And they might do it for a little while, but once the willpower, once that exact sort of initial willpower is gone, mm-hmm. they haven't managed to establish a habit. So it's much better to recruit your reward based system, make it feel good, start small, achieve success, and then you will naturally want to continue. Um, Mm -hmm. So make it feel good, be kind to yourself when it's when it's tricky. And know that every time you close your eyes, you are making a difference to the way that your your brain can process all the stress that we have. 
Now, now, Laura, could you just um, to talk us through how exactly your program at um, B, B Meditation actually work? Um, how long does it take? Is it a course? And how does exactly it help people? So um, it's a seven session program that's mm -hmm. designed. So the initial stages of that, the first three sessions are really about um, it's about taking you from you know whatever your experience level is giving you the real understanding and and knowledge and techniques and really embedding and helping you understand how to meditate mm -hmm. and then we move it then the last half of the program moves into transforming how you experience your life mm -hmm. so that's where we look at using meditation to change how you think to change to look at how you're thinking about your life Mm -hmm. um, change your relationship to your thinking and mm -hmm. redefining what happiness is so that you can actually it can be something achievable in your life mm -hmm. and then connecting into yourself in a, a in a in a uh, more consistent way so and throughout we look at the science of exactly what's happening so everything from the neuroscience of what's happening in the brain to the quantum physics of mm -hmm. how it works now not not for its own sake not just because but because actually by building this layered understanding it really helps to embed the practice so that seven session program I tend to meet with people fortnightly as if it's one-to-one -one. I do have um, an online program as well so I will I will I do kind of run group programs online and then once somebody's finished the program they then join my community and so once a month we have a group um, a group meditation either I have an online one and an in-person one and in that session, we pull out one strand of the theory of what we've mm. covered in the course, as well as one strand of like, I suppose, a, a practice technique. So maybe it's something that a common thing that people are struggling with or something about how to make your practice better. And we in that workshop, in those community workshops, we we you, we actually revisit those things and give you. So that's where that accountability comes in. And then once a month, there's a, a Q&A, an online Q&A so people can troubleshoot troubleshoot their practice mm -hmm. keep motivated so the short answer is there's a seven session program and then an ongoing lifetime community so once somebody learns to meditate with me mm -hmm. your your i will support you for life so you know that's that's my commitment to the people that i work with Mm. I really like the the idea that uh, you're not just offering a course, but it's really you know you're you're creating a community um, within people of you know interested about meditation. Now let, let's um, move away from meditation a bit. Um, um, aside from meditation, um, what do you do for self care? Um, so for me, see, I think of self care as being a really broad thing. So um, I, for me, there's a few pillars to that. So I know that I need to get outside. So um, I try. So I suppose my my um, daily routine, if, if maybe if I describe my daily routine. So I, in the morning, my kind of commitment to myself is that I, I do tend to get up before everybody else because I know that works for me and it works in my life. So I get up and I have a commitment of like three. My minimum commitment to myself is three sun salutations, which is like a yoga sequence, um, mm -hmm. which is like often I'll do more. But my minimum commitment to myself is I'll just get on the mat and I will just do three. And then if I feel like doing more, then I'm already there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also journal. So I just do mm -hmm. like a free writing journal where mm -hmm. I don't not with any structure. I just write whatever comes into my mind. I do two pages and then I do my meditation practice. So that's my morning. And I am a big believer in in. Uh, fueling my body the right way so okay. I tend to have I tend to make sure that I have a really nutritious breakfast mm -hmm. so um, I like porridge with the addition of I don't know all sorts of different things to make it like mm -hmm. protein packed and everything um, and then I really I'm, I try and be really thoughtful about the way that I fuel my body because I know that when I don't do that my body I, it's all everything has to be in balance and so it's about what I put in and I spend time I always walk every day and make sure I, come rain or shine because being outside is really important to me um and um I try and it, the usual things of trying to spend time with friends and family um mm -hmm. I and you know like anyone it, you wax and wane with how balanced you are and and one of the things that actually meditation has gifted me is the ability to notice the patterns in my own life and notice mm -hmm. when I'm not on track you know and in mm -hmm. fact a couple of months ago, I realized that my self-care had slipped. You know, I wasn't, I was not giving myself enough time and I was working too much and I was, 
but I was able to really notice and start taking steps to bring it back in line. I think that's for all of us. It's like this backwards and forwards and just staying aware, tuning into yourself and doing the things you need and, and actually trusting that you know what you need in any moment and that you have to just commit to yourself to get to do it. Uh, but that's taken a long journey to get to that point. Mm-hmm. Now, you, you mentioned um, on one of your tips that uh, um, the importance of being mindful, but um, if there's one thing that people could do to be more mindful today, um, what would it be? Well, there's a few there's a few um, ways that you can because um, really the, the best type of habit building is one where you kind of you it, it's already a, a habit that you already have. So, for mm-hmm. example, um, if you make a cup of tea in the morning um, or during your day, can you commit to once a day not doing anything else while the kettle's boiling? Um, so you literally just stand while the kettle's boiling and that just allows you to and just feel your body just mm-hmm. literally tune in to your feet on the floor feeling mm-hmm. your hands feeling your breath nothing nothing fancy just as simple as that or mm-hmm. um tick huck nan who's um was a spiritual teacher and he would say when your phone rings don't answer it till the third ring and use the first three rings as a mindful moment um mm-hmm. And and just little things. And and somebody said to a client at the other day that she was told, use a doorway as a threshold. So whenever you walk through a doorway, just see that as a cue to just check in. Just it's as simple as checking in. Mm. Where is my body right now? Where am I? Like that's all mindfulness is. It's paying attention on purpose. So choosing mm. where you put your attention in the present moment without judgment. And mm. that judgment bit is the bit where we start to notice when we have a meditation practice how much. We have that voice saying, oh, I'm, this isn't good enough or that's not good enough or judging the people around us. And we can start to become aware and actually just drop into, well, how is it right this moment? Mm-hmm. Th- thank you for this wonderful tips, Laura. Now, for my final question, um, how can we get in touch with you? Um, are you on social media? Yes, I am. So I'm on Instagram and Facebook at mm-hmm. Be Modern Meditation. And my website is bemodernmeditation.com and there's lots of resources on there and, and you can um, download mm-hmm. um, an, e- an e-book which tells you all about my program and you mm-hmm. can also download a five-minute meditation. Um, and when you sign up to the newsletter, you receive um, some tips to get you started. You mm-hmm. get a, a free meditation. And um, yeah, and I'm always up for um, questions. So mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. I, I, am, I am a meditation geek. I love talking all these <laughs> meditations. So I can know, any that. anytime. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you you mentioned about your ebook. Is that a free ebook? The free ebook. It's it's basically okay. just it's to to, to sh- um so you can see um exactly what I've been talking about, like how the program works and what meditation does. It's got a little bit more in there about meditation. So um yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, Laura, thank you for sharing with us your passion and your expertise about meditation. Um, but unfortunately, our time is up. Um, yes. I look forward to hearing more about your work and all the best. Thanks, Dennis.